this is Paul Hammond. You are watching the Lake Forest Podcast. Welcome to the Lake Forest Podcast, a podcast with the lovely city of Lake Forest, featuring topics like local news, sports, music, people, food, and mayoral elections. My name is Pete, and I'm joined with the voice of Lake Forest High School basketball, football, lacrosse, chess team, Scoo, woo, woo, woo. The Lake Forest Podcast is supported by viewers, listeners, and businesses just like you. Make a memory of a lifetime with Shark Eye Outdoors out of Longboat Key, Florida. Experience their shark beach fishing, kayak tours, and fossil hunting. Go to SharkGuyOutdoors.com to schedule an outing now. Forest Bluff Real Estate Group serves Illinois, Wisconsin, Lake Forest, and Lake Bluff. John Josephitis, Laura Lee Van Fleet, and Michelle Parnell get a free market analysis now at ForestBluffRealEstate.com. For the best cannabis in the world, look no further than Iliad Epic Row. They're a cannabis cultivation center owned by Lake Bluff's own Rich Ruzich. They focus on hard-to-find small batch products that will delight both the occasional user and Ganjie. When visiting Michigan, ask for it by name, Epic Products, Exceptional Process, Iliad Epic Grow. For more information, email info at iliadgrow.com. Havy Communications has been helping first responders arrive safely since 1983. It's owned by Lake Forest owned Mike Havy. Check them out at havycommunications.com. We'd also like to say that we're thankful for our patron supporters. Reverend Luke Back from the Church of the Holy Spirit. Matt A., Elizabeth C., Costa, Lance, Otto, RDM, John C., Dan Rogers, and Mike Adelman. Shout out to the Lake Forest Breakfast Group, Broad Stop in Kenosha, Captain Mike's Kenosha, Greentown Tavern in Waukegan, and the Frolic Lounge in Waukegan. Walker, how you doing, Steve? Good morning, Pete. How are you? This Thanks. is a very cold day. Cold. We just got done with seven inches of snow. That was nothing. Hmm. It's nothing when you call somebody else to shovel it. Happy February. <laughs> February one. Through 2023. Tabla Rasa, clean slate. Scoo, very special show. We have the Paul Hammond today with us on the red sofa. He's going to be running for mayor. Say hi to Paul. Welcome, Paul. How are you today? Finding you. Doing great. Doing great. That's good. So we, we finally got Paul on. We've been uh, all we know about Paul is the three minutes, and he's pretty good with his three minutes when he goes to the podium. I'll give you credit to that, Paul. Is when you go up there and you talk about uh, uh, various issues. So uh, we had one opinion that was formed of you, and then uh, we talked on the phone uh, a couple weeks ago and got another opinion of you. Two different opinions, you know, three minutes to an hour. Now we have you on the red sofa, and we really want to drill down and see who the hell you are. So, Paul Hammond, thank you for coming on the Lake Forest Podcast. Thank you for having me. Just a, a little background. Yeah. Um, first time or lifetime resident of Lake Forest, licensed professional engineer, registered energy professional in Chicago, Purdue electrical engineer graduate. While I was at Purdue, I was a, a student senator. I represented 2,000 students in the dorm to the administration. I also ran for Purdue student body vice president. I was a member of the Purdue lacrosse team, and I was on the traveling squad. So I'm conscious of what athletes might be going through on the topic of turf fields. I was also a, a Purdue lifeguard at the university pool. And I've been trading commodities for over 40 years. The uh, reason that I'm running for mayor uh, basically starts out uh, regarding turf. The uh, second thing is when the last city manager retired a few years ago, I volunteered to work for free for the next 10 years as city manager and save the city of Lake Forest $3 million dollars. I sent an email to all the city council members on Saturday, August 11th, 2018 at 11.30 a.m. And candidate Bidler was on the city council at that time. Candidates Tack and Bidler are members of the Lake Forest Caucus, and they could have volunteered for that work. I believe the candidates Tack and Bidler are just running for the title. I believe they have no intention of working 18-hour days to close the $52 million pension gap. In my book, the city manager fills 
pretty close to the same role as the uh, mayor. Point three, the uh, city of Lake Forest lost almost $8 million in pension money last year because the caucus city council members approved a revision to the city investment policy. They changed the pension money criteria into money losing sustainable projects. During the past 10 years, I've traded, I've made 779 trades in my PTI securities account and 100% of the trades were profitable. I paid taxes on all of those trades. Wait, did you say 100%? Yes, 100%. Let me make sure I'm writing that down. Goldman Sachs has a trading desk and they could have made any of those trades. If I can beat Goldman Sachs every day for 10 years, then I should be able to help the city of Lake Forest. My broker is Tom Howe. You all have my permission to contact him to verify my trading records with PTI Securities. Going through the 779 trades would take more than a week. So if you have any questions, you can contact him directly. Just a few things as far as the foundation of the way that I trade. I basically have four things. Number one, I look at macro events as far as world events, uh, government events. Number two, I look at the corporate finance. And one thing that I've gained over the past 40 years is I look for revenue per employee and profit per employee. If you take a company like uh, Google, they have revenue of about 2 million and they have profit of about a half a million dollars for uh, each employee. So that allows them a lot more room to make mistakes. Uh, whereas a company like Walmart, where they might only make $2,000 per employee, if if they have to pay each of the employee <clears throat> another dollar per hour, there goes all of their profits. So the second is the corporate finance. The third is I look as far as charting, whether it's a sideways market or a trending market. And number four, I look at the Greeks. I look at the Delta and I look at the second standard deviation, and I look at the implied volatility. As far as preserving wealth, you do it in one way. You do 25% stocks, 25% gold, 25% 13-week treasuries, and 25% 30-year bonds. If you wanna make wealth, you don't do two of the four, and the trick is knowing which two. As far as reducing pension liabilities, I agree that the city of Lake Forest has a AAA bond rating, but just recently they changed to open amortization. Lake Forest may have a AAA bond rating, but the last time I checked, the underfunded pension liabilities were $52 million. By Lake Forest approving the open amortization, if you can pay the interest, just charge the expenditures to future generations to pay off the principal. So it's sort of like having a a 30 year mortgage on your house. Normally at the end of 30 years, you own the house clean and clear. By the open amortization at the end of 30 years, you still owe the same amount on your uh, home. That's one of the tricks that they've used as far as just keep on redoing your mortgage and never pay off the principal. Paul, can I unpack some of that? Sure. Now, the pension, I could have sworn uh, Mayor George said uh, about a month ago that the pension liability should be leveled out. To me, leveled out meaning it's going to be able to pay for itself by 2025. Does that take care of your objection or are you saying that there is opportunity costs that we could be making more than just leveling out? I believe that the biggest fallacy is the fact that if you look as far as the Japanese market, the Japanese market peaked in 1988. So now over 30 years later, it is half of where it is today. So the people who sit back and say, hey, I don't have to worry because every every eight years, the market always comes back. If you go back to the 1800s, in about 1830, it took 61 years to come back even. 
So part of the fallacy is the fact that they believe that every eight years, the market comes back. Now, we're assuming that Japan and the USA has the same GDP, the same population demographics. Aren't Japanese like aging and not reproducing? I know the USA isn't either, but. Well, I think one of the issues as far as why Japan is really like us is Japan had interest rates at zero basically for the past 30 years. So we've had interest rates at zero for the past 10, 12 years. So I believe there there are a lot of similarities. Okay. Um, I look at the biggest issue on the table right now is the fact that there's $90 trillion worth of debt out there. When interest rates were at zero, no big deal. When you have interest rates at 4%, 4% on 90 trillion is 3.6 trillion. If the Federal Reserve does not increase the money supply by 3.6 trillion every year, that forces people to do debt liquidation by selling their assets. And one of their assets could be stocks, real estate, multitude of issues. I look at the issue of the debt that's out there is very problematic. The uh, uh, second issue is the fact. Now, is this the second issue past the pension obligations? No. Okay, we're still on. Okay, good. We got it. Um, is the fact that when you have debt, it pulls demand forward. So our GDP right now is twenty trillion. So the fact that debt is ninety trillion means we pulled four and a half years of demand forward. That I believe is very problematic. Uh, next issue is the issue of government debt. If you go back to 1980, the uh, uh, US debt was 1 trillion. Eight years later, it was 2 trillion. Eight years later, it was 4 trillion. Eight years later, it was 16, then 32. We're currently at $32 trillion. So the real question is, do you believe in the next eight years, we're gonna go from 30, Two trillion to sixty-four trillion. Paul, so, there's there. Hold on. There's no. I'm not going to argue any of that stuff. You're running for mayor of Lake Forest, and you're talking to the voters out there. Sure. And you just gave them a personal finance class. You, you're running on a on an issue that you're saying you're the there's an issue with the pension obligations. The mayor is saying that it's not going to be an issue in 2025. So what you're saying is the mayor is wrong. That that is not going to be the case in 20. 25, correct? A little caveat. Yeah. I have three things that I look at every Friday. I look at the M2 money supply, the Fed balance sheet, Lake and the velocity Fox. of money. So right now, I believe that we're, we're going to go sideways to drift down unless the Fed balance sheet increases, the money supply increases, or the velocity of money. Since February of last year, the Fed balance sheet has stayed level at nine trillion. The M2 money supply fairly unchanged. Velocity of money is still still is about one point two. Excuse me, Paul. I see a hand up from the crowd. Uh, yeah, Paul. Uh, first off, I just want to congratulate you uh, for running for mayor. I think it's a great. Testament that our community, you know, even though everyone that's a voter is a member of the caucus system, you're challenging the caucus system and you did it the right way, as opposed to one of the other candidates who did it kind of a different way, which we don't agree with. But um, with your running for mayor, um, I'm just curious, you're running on your stance on the pension as well as uh, the turf fields, I believe. How Correct. If you're elected mayor, um, how are you going to be able to work? First off, the pension and the turf fields are kind of horse out of the barn type of thing. And as mayor, how are you going to kind of reel that in, if even possible? 
understanding your role as mayor is going to be more of a facilitator of the council and the council, uh, which is a beautiful thing, you know, gets things passed and moved forward working with the city, but by uh, um, voting on particular issues and you'll be the tiebreaker in those types of issues. But how do you how do you plan on working with the city as well as the council, as well as the boards and commissions um, with your docket of issues you want to bring forward? I believe that almost all of the uh, commissions are working smoothly. I really have no problem with with any of them. I mean, uh, people have brought up issues with the historical society and others. I really ha have no problem with it. The real question on the turf field is whether or not the uh, city council passes the expenditure before April 4th. If they pass it before April 4th, it will be much more problematic. I've sent an email to the city council and uh, the mayor regarding over the past eight months, I've gone house to house, all four wards, talked to people. People have no problem with residing, regrading, reseeding, new uh, bathrooms, redoing the parking lot, a uh, maintenance facility, you name it. The only one thing people have the problem with is the issue of the plastic. It absorbs heat. It's not environmentally uh, sound. Um, so if you look as far as Chicago Bears, they play on natural grass. The uh, uh, Cubs play on natural grass. So my hope would be... The White Sox play on natural grass, more importantly. One of the, uh, I'm against the turf from the standpoint, every day when I turn on the TV, every news story is global warming. I have the problem that if you have a nuclear power plant and you haven't written it off, but it's only five years old and you say, hey, I want to close it down, that that capital investment has already been made. I'm trying to stop the capital investment before it's made. Well, so, let, me, let me just re, re rephrase the question then. And obviously, um, there's been discussions since the last council meeting on this that, that the turf that they're proposing to put down is recyclable, which is a good thing. But more importantly, I mean, if, if this gets passed before April, what, number one, is your plan? I know you oppose it, but moving forward, it's kind of a dead issue once it gets passed. And you know, honestly, even if it doesn't get passed by April 4th, how are you going to leverage yourself as mayor working with the city council to, for lack of a better word, overturn this? They've already done the half a million dollars with the design. The issue of elevations, uh, maintenance facility, all, 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 everything, if you were to go with natural grass, you would have probably spent $400,000 doing the design to regrade it, reseed it, uh, redo the elevation. But if, the issue with the natural grass, and I'll let you know, I'm all for natural grass. I coached on those fields. I played on those fields. The maintenance alone on a day-to-day, month-to-month, year-to-year basis is going to far outweigh putting turf down, particularly when it rains and all that. But my, I guess my question is, how are you going to work with the city council if you're still opposing it? I mean, again, you're one vote. So how does sure. that the, the, change the, that? The, the uh, real big question on the table is whether or not they, they sign the contract before April 4th. If they sign the contract before April 4th, there's basically almost nothing I could do. If they if they don't sign the contract until after April 4th, I believe that most of the design work is already done. My biggest issue is every 10 years, you have to replace it. So it's a recurring expense of a million dollars each year. So if they go with natural grass, I'll hire four grounds people full time, one for each of the four baseball fields. So they can work on just one field full time and I'm still ahead. 
Well, I guess, I, again, my, my question, Paul, I'm trying to get at an answer. Sure, Let's no problem. It, I'm it, sorry. It goes past April 4th, and it's not signed. First off, the mayor doesn't have the power to hire staff. If it's not signed by April 4th, you being one vote on the council as a tiebreaker, how are you going to work with staff, as you say, to get maintenance workers, as an example, which, I mean, that's already under underway anyhow on the staffing for the field, because it's just not going to stay the same as it is. But let's say it's not signed. What are you, How are you going to work with the city outside of hiring people, because that's not in your purview, and work with the city council to push that agenda you have forward? I'm not sure what you're running on if it's information that's kind of you can't really control, so to speak. Um, I believe you can control because you wouldn't bring it up in front of council. I don't know how you how you don't do that. That's the city staff's job. I mean, how are well, you going well, to do it as an individual as mayor to not bring something up in front of council, but then work with the city to get what you're looking for? Each department has a, a budget right now. Let's say the uh, police department has a budget of $5 million. They're going to buy a new squad car every year. So that budget has already been passed as long but as. That's, but that's passed with the city council voting. Exactly. The only way you come into play is if it's a tie. So how do you as mayor get your platform that you're running on push through the system if you're only one vote and you more than likely don't won't get a vote on it? Does that make sense? I, if there's a majority I, on the council voting for something, then your vote doesn't really play in. Like the example of the uh, uh, squad cars. Mm -hmm. If Do you bring up that the uh, city is going to buy a, a police car? They just approved, I believe it was an ambulance. And I think it was through the omnibus, which was voted on by council. I guess the way that I look at it is the uh, city budget is what, 70 plus million dollars each year? I don't believe that that every every expenditure is, is approved by city council. Correct. So basically, you have to have a good relationship with Jason uh, Wicca. Sure. And, and again, yeah, you're absolutely right. But the stuff that doesn't come to the council goes through city staff and city manager and all that. So I apologize. I'm getting back to one. I'm trying to get my question answered is that you're running on issues that are kind of gone already been voted on, but how are you going to pull that back into, let's say, working with Jason to convince him and staff and all that, that turf fields aren't good if you have, if that's not been done already. You see, oh, I, 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 that's what I'm just trying to get at. Oh, okay. Here, here's an example. Do you know Smith's Men's Store? Know it well. Okay. Right outside, there's a tree. There's a grate there. Uh, My dog loves it. Last June, I saw somebody trip because the grade is missing, but the edge around it is is still in place. So the person tripped on that ledge. Mm -hmm. So I sent a a, a uh, email to a, a director at uh, the city. It's now going on the full year. They haven't replaced that tripping hazard. So when you say, "What authority will I have?" Well, you'll have, you'll have influence. I just don't know what it's going to come up in the vote, Paul. What's the third issue that you have on? I want to make sure we cover everything in our in our time. The the uh, next one is trees. Over the past years, South Park used to have 30 evergreen trees along the tennis courts. They removed them all. My sister put in a similar type of evergreens. It was $1,000 for each one. So the fact that the city cut down 30 or about $30,000 worth of evergreens, I don't see why they couldn't have left th those trees there. Uh, number two, uh, Franklin Place. There were 104 full-grown evergreen trees. City tore them down, cut them down, and sold that land to a developer. If you go as far as McCormick Ravine, they cut down hundreds of trees. If you go as far as Forest Park, add all of the trees that they took down. Yes, 
if you take all of the trees down and you leave one tree and you say, isn't this a magnificent tree? Yes, by cutting down all the trees around it, when you look at that tree, it looks magnificent. But they had hundreds of trees there. They cut those all down. If you look to see where that mudslide occurred, I have pictures of the four tree stumps that they had removed in that area where they had the uh, uh, mudslide. And then, and then if you go to the train station in town, they had 18 full-grown full 8-inch diameter trees. City cut them all down and put in brand new ones. And when I talked to city staff, they said, oh, aren't, aren't all the pretty ones? They're all two inches in diameter. I go, the, the eight inch ones were, were pretty also. They said, oh, well, w we were doing some work. It was in the contract, so we cut them down. Five years later, on the other side of the train station, they cut down those 18 trees. If you look as far as Market Square, the diameter of those trees in Market Square, they're not 150 year old. In, in about the 1980s, they were doing sewer work. So they cut down all of those trees in Market Square. I had a problem with that. If you look as far as in front of Northern Trust Bank, there, there used to be six trees. They, they cut those down. If you look as far as in front of the Jewel parking lot, there, there's, there's a, a tree missing. I sent them a, a email last year about it. They still haven't done that. If you walk through town, you'll notice many locations where they've removed the trees and replaced it with concrete. If you look as far as they had plantings at the parking area on McKinley, right by community center, they cut down all 18. If you walk that area, you can just count count the uh, uh, stubs. They're, they're 18 stubs. So I live in Lake Forest for the forest and not to look at concrete. So I believe that the Lake Forest sh City Council should maintain that any trees removed in the business, business district should be replaced with another tree. So as far as trees, if you walk along the, the uh, bike path, You'll you'll find many dead trees. Instead of removing the dead trees, they're cutting down the uh, the uh, underbrush. I understand where you're coming from with the trees because that's part of Lake Forest, uh, being Tree City USA forever and ever. And um, the city does have a very good arborist and uh, staff that handles this stuff. Um, how, as mayor, if you're elected? Are you going to work with city staff? Because again, I mean, I don't, I understand your issues, but can you as mayor do anything about the trees when they need to come down for whatever reason the staff decides? And how are you going to work with staff to, again, if you have issues with it, how are you going to work with Corey and his staff about coming to a resolution on not doing it or doing it? Getting back to the issue that I protested the 18 trees cut on the platform on the one side, and five years later they said, we don't care. We're, we're just cutting them down. So I guess the question on the table is, do you believe Corey is running the uh, city or the mayor is running the city? No, that's not my question on the table. I mean, one, the city manager runs the city, but and Corey reports to the city manager. But my question is, how are you, as mayor, you're running on certain issues to be elected as mayor? Let's say you get elected. How are you going to implement what you're running on? I mean, if I'm a voter, which I am, if I'm going to vote for you, I guess I want to know what you're going to implement as mayor, not necessarily what's already done and moving forward. Does that make sense? That's what we're trying to get out with this podcast is your, where you stand, why you're running for mayor, and what you plan on doing, how you're going to work with the city, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I look at it more like Elon Musk. Elon Musk basically sleeps at the factory. He has a sofa 
and he's there 18 hours a day. So, so the issue on the table right now is we're in the hole by $52 million. Who if is? you want, I'm sorry. Who's in the hole? Okay. Those, those are unfunded, determined by an actuarial. So an actuary has sat down and said, based upon your payout schedule, you should have already made fifty-two additional uh, million dollars. So, so last year the city put six million dollars in the pensions, and we should have put another eight million in just to stay even at forty-four million. So, what are you going to do as mayor? Um, are you going to overhaul the pension? Police and fire commission that handles when, the pensions and all that, or do you remember Harry Griffith? Very well. Thank God he's gone. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, see, see yeah. Harry Griffith. He's, he was the uh, old superintendent that you know. Oh, again, my opinion just was horrible. Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um. I went to 44 consecutive school board meetings when they were doing the expansion at the high school. Yep. When I was there, one of the uh, uh, board members from Lake Forest High School said, uh, when we had the last superintendent, we were always in the hole by about 1.5 million. And now with Harry, we've got an extra 1.5 million in the budget. What's the difference? And Harry Griffith's comment was, I don't have to hire consultants. He came from Texas, where he was in charge of 73 schools. When he came to Lake Forest, he had five. He said, he I already know up. what to do. <laughs> I'm sorry. And he screwed it up. Oh, okay, what, what did he screw up? Um, well, first off, we're looking at a referendum right now to replace and repair stuff that should have been done in that first overhaul under Harry. Number two, he combined the uh, the districts to try to save money, which, you know, fast forward is probably not the smartest thing that was done. Well, Horrible nice. superintendent. And he, he wasn't really, I believe, on the upscale of special needs kids oh, oh, and how oh, they should okay. be treated. Oh, okay, last year... Uh, the uh, school, the high school had a uh, a meeting. They said we currently have sixteen million dollars in, in our in our in our hands. We don't we don't know what to do with sixteen million dollars. And I, I said, uh, I I basically got up and I spoke. They 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 had their uh, architect there, and I said, uh, Oh, what are what are you going to do with the sixteen million dollars? Can the newcomer uh, pop in here real quick? Sure. What what can the mayor do for the people that are listening here? I'm voting for mayor. Uh, sounds like from Scoo's standpoint, the mayor can't do anything. So what am I? No, really not voting? necessarily. Pete. That's see, not what see, I said. see, basically, Mr. Walker has it down to a T. Okay. There are 200 city 200 city employees. If they want me to fail, they can make me fail. There is no way I can make it work unless they help me. So, so if they aren't on board, then it's going to be a, a, a very confrontational uh, uh, eighteen hours a day. Because well, I, don't, I don't, I don't. Let me. Can I, I just need to interrupt you there, Paul? I don't think it's um, if the city staff agrees with you it's a collaboration the city staff is there to do the job and and you know work with council as and it's vice versa it's not um i, I guess the mayor doesn't come in as someone that's going to dictate well the city well, manager has a staff that does all that and then they work with the council and the mayor so i'm not really sure that's accurate to say that you know if they don't if they want to make you fail because that's not their role or job and that's not what anyone would say. So I just wanted to clarify that. How do you pick the city manager then? The last guy left. How do we find Jason? It was in a nationwide search. So it's not a caucus thing. No. Okay. So you pay you pay recruiters to go out and find. 
or however the city does it. I just wonder why the caucus doesn't pick the city manager and throw, throw he's it paid. out. There. He's paid. That the caucus is all volunteer fee. Okay. Got it. Got it. That's a separation. Right. It's a city management government. Got it. I'm trying to work with Paul here to figure out what he what he can influence here. All right. So if the <clears throat> the trees are gone, what you're saying, Paul, is going forward, no more cutting down trees. If they're dead. I have no problem okay. cutting them down. If you go to McCormick Ravine, yeah, I'm not sure if Mr. Walker's been all the time. Yeah, been there, oh, been oh, everywhere in Lake Forest. Oh, 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 okay. Did you see how many trees that they cut down? Yeah, I, I, I took pictures of it. They they took like a one acre area and they clear cut it. They cut every single tree down. So so as far as what can I do? But, as far as but I guess what was the reason, Paul? That's my question. And how much of that was buckthorn and other brush that needs to be cleared? I do know buckthorn, Paul. Well, well, they. I, I, I thought somebody indicated that that forty percent of the uh, growth around here is buckthorn. Which so, yeah. so, <laughs> so when you so, start clearing that out, that's going to be looks like a lot of trees are being removed. You got a fourth uh, fourth uh, issue you want to uh, talk about? I know you got three, but I'm just saying, let's just say, okay, the turf gets the, the contract signed, so you can't run on turf. Mayor George says things are going to get sold by 2025. It's going to be hard to r run on that. You can say it is, you can say it's not, but it's going to be hard. The trees, the trees are gone. Maybe you got something there. What else, what else you got for the voters to uh, figure out why they should pick you? Well, I, I, I think you you can go to the issue or, or the biggest problem that any city mayor will have, like the 4th of July event. If you go back 20, 30 years ago, we spent $3,000 for a band. We had a good time. We had a party. No big deal. And you have the people who say next year it's going to be bigger and better. So instead of 3000 they spend 10000 and then next year they say it's going to be bigger and better and we're going to spend 50,000. And then the next year it's going to be bigger and better. It's going to be 100,000. And then it's going to be bigger and better and it's going to be 300,000. And then all of a sudden you get an event that blows up in their face. And all of a sudden you have $300,000 instead of using to pay down the pensions for, for something that... Uh, is not really in the preview of the uh, uh, city. To me, I look at the city as being police, fire, sewer, garbage. We have parks and we act as a catalyst. We aren't really trying to be a Ravinia. So, Paul, what you're talking about is like the Maddie and Tay. That's the friends. Help me out, Scoo. That's the friends of the park, Parks and Rec. Foundation. That's not parks and rec. That's not the parks and rec. No, that's okay. not the city either. It's not so, the city, but it becomes the city if there's a, an event that. You know, see, shooting. see, basically what happened was 20 years ago, we had two rain uh, rains in, in a row as far as 4th of July, 4th of July, and 50% of the tickets are sold on the day of the event. So if it rains, uh, you, you, you have a hard time breaking even. So, so 20 years ago, the city council said, what the hell are we in this business for as far as running concerts? So, so there, there's a difference between spending $3,000, hiring a band and, and having a good time and bringing the Rolling Stones in or, or somebody a, at a high level. And see, let's see, the whole purpose of a non-refundable ticket is that the people know that things can occur that might cancel it because they've got to rent the equipment, they've got to uh, get the people flown in. The issue of whether or not you want to burden the city with things that we aren't experts at. So you're getting at, just want to make clear on this, you're getting at the issue that happened on the 4th of July this year, the tragedy 
And then the city council decided to um, pony up money to well, the city reimburse the it. foundation because the city canceled it. Is that that was the three hundred thousand or so, I believe you're talking about. Correct. Okay, so that's not twenty years ago when there was a three thousand dollar ban, if there even was one. But I, I just want to make clear that it's not about your. It's the foundation getting money for a tragedy that they really had no one had control of. It's more the issue that whenever you talk to somebody, a resident, they say, we want it bigger and better next year. We want it bigger and better next year. If you look at it, that the city provides the police, fire, sewer, garbage pickup, maintaining the parks, that's what what I believe that the residents are, are looking for. Not but the, be... city, the city doesn't, that's the foundation that sponsors the uh, fireworks and all the other ancillary bands and all that. That's not the city, correct? I understand. See, see that's, where, that's where everything becomes a shell game in, in this world. Um, just just uh, uh, last week, the city gave 350,000 the senior center gave 450,000 so that's uh, $800,000 to a charity in Libertyville for affordable housing in Lake Forest but so you're but, against the affordable housing no i'm not okay i'm saying we lose control we're losing control who's losing control lake forest if they don't maintain, if they don't maintain the, those cottages and, and, and it has to be painted or, or something in, in the future and the, the city staff says we can't do anything, the, the, the uh, um, Libertyville charity owns it. So, so let me ask you this, Paul, in regards to the senior housing where the, the, pro the uh, property that there is in question is right next to some senior housing that was put up prior to that correct there's no issues with maintenance and all that it's going to be the same i believe the same um association and all that but my comment is that uh do do you know hilltop center mm -hmm. okay my mom was on the board okay they built 12 12 cottages okay so 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 a, a, a board can can build 12 cottages no big deal so so as far as saying oh see see that's the problem that i have with with the city staff the city staff says we cannot or we don't have the expertise to maintain a cottage so so they say it's too complex for us to run and have 12 cottages and we're going to give that we're going to give the money to build it we're giving the land to to a charity in libertyville my that's comment gonna run is, everything what's that put, that's going to run everything and put affordable housing in that plot and make things nice for our seniors that are looking to stay in the community i'm i'm not sure i'm following my mom the hilltop what was basically a charity so, so the board, which is no can, longer, what's that? Hilltop doesn't exist, right? It's gone now. It was in Lake Forest. Exactly. What, what was they, Hilltop? They it's sold a, it. It was for elderly. Okay. It's gone. But it, okay. it, years ago, gone. All right. Continue. I have no problem with the affordable housing and the cottages. I'm saying that, that, we're we're donating the land and we're donating the money. And the last time I looked as far as the seniors, uh, there, there were like 20 people on the board. You have 20 people on the board. And as far as affordable housing and cottages, I don't see why they, everybody says everything's too complex. Everything is too complex. The city staff says we, we're, we're maintaining a lot of city buildings and we don't have the expertise 
to maintain 12 cottages. Well, isn't that, isn't that really kind of how homeowners associations work too? Isn't that really kind of, so I guess my question is you're against the fact the city allocated money to build senior cottages. For no, seniors and no, 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 no. I had the problem that they gave it to Libertyville. They gave it, it to Libertyville. Who's going to build a the charity car? in Libertyville. Right. It's a charity in Libertyville. Okay. So what's going to be done with that money with the charity? Not build the cottages? No, but but I'm saying when you give it to another charity and in three, five, seven years, they don't they don't maintain it. Now, what do you do? OK, I, I just again, I'm tr trying to get at you want to be mayor. Well, it, it, right. Us. Exactly. And, how, and, how and my contention, my contention is. Stop giving everything away. The, the city of, of Lake Forest gave 60 acres to open lands. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lake Forest lost control. Did they? What did they lose control of? They no longer own the land. Okay. Open lands has control over it. And what does open lands do for the city? Oh, oh, okay. Um, Wesley, Wesley Road. There, yeah. there, there's a there's a subdivision called the Preserve, right? Mm -hmm. How the open land sold sold that land? Okay. I don't believe people give land to open lands for them to turn around and sell it for to developers. But again, Paul, I'm trying to get back to the whole issue. You're running for mayor. What are you going to do to work with the city as mayor? Um, I mean, you're you're not. Are you gonna? Are you saying that you're going to go in there, get elected as mayor, and then tell the city they can't stop doing stuff they're doing? That they exactly, feel? exactly. Say say, hey, we're gonna we're gonna spend time in, in cutting trees down. Do you think that's your purview as mayor to go into the city manager and tell him stop doing this stuff? We don't want you to do anything. Do you think that's going to work as mayor? Basically, when I go door to door for the past eight months and I talk to the residents by being elected, who's going to determine whether you're going to put city staff uh, you know, South Park? There's that two acres south of South Park. Where Joy Time was? What are you talking about, the two acres at South Park? Between between where the baseball fields are mm -hmm. and, and that cell tower is. Okay. C city staff went in as far as clearing that out. I'm not sure what you mean by clearing it out. Again, I, I don't want, I don't, I'm not wanting to get into – let's just take to a get out of you, Paul, what you're running for mayor for – I understand your issues that you're you don't like what was done, but as I think, mayor, Paul, I, th I think Paul wants to be in a position of influence. My question, Paul, is: Did you ever try to get on the caucus so you would have influence on the caucus? Yes. How'd that go? For about three years at church, Ted Husack came up to me every Sunday and said, "We would like you to be on the codes commission," and, and I go. You know, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. He got me on a week week Sunday after three years, and I finally said, put my name in, no problem. So they put my name in. I interviewed at uh, Country Day. Four wards. There were six from each ward. There were 24. It was unanimous. Put this guy on. We want him. The part, the part with the caucus is, city staff that don't live in the city who don't pay property tax tells the caucus who can represent them. If you go to the caucus website, city staff has the ability to cross the people's name off. Can I because, interrupt you, Paul? That, that's not true. City go staff to the website. Not... Go to the website. It hey, says Paul? city staff has to approve the people. No, so, the so mayor Paul, approves the people. You, if you were elected mayor, you would approve boards and commissions appointments that are passed forward 
to you. The caucus is the one that's the, you know, that's who determines on boards and commissions through a vetting process of interviews. If you go, yes, yes. If you go, if you go to the caucus website and you read through the process, the last three words says, and approved by city staff. I'm not sure whether it, it, it said approved, but but it said and and reviewed by city staff or or whatever. So so city staff now has the ability to cross the people's name off, even though they were unanimously approved. Well, so let me let me just shift this. We got to check that. Let me we just add. We got to check it. Yeah. Oh, okay. so you tr- you tried to get on the caucus and you got nixed. Is that what happened? It didn't hurt me. I, I, I mean, no, that's what I'm saying. We're tra- we're trying to get it out there because because you want to be in a position of influence. You tried to get on the caucus and it, and it didn't work out. Didn't you try to run for Congress back in 2010 somewhere? Around exactly. There? Okay, and uh, that was when Dold had a good year. Hmm. Well, it it, it was uh, interesting because uh, I got a call. The the person said, "How do you how do you stand on on abortion?" And I said, "All six candidates." The person said, "Oh, a pro life person has back uh, Dole," and 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 so so I called up the organization and, and I said, "How can a pro life person back somebody who's pro choice?" So th- that that's what yeah, I thought I, was I interesting. Dole had a good year, so. 2017 was it? Ward two, you were you went up against Melanie Rummel. And exactly. Like, okay. How'd that go? Like, what were you running on then? You don't have to get too deep in the weeds on the issues, but what were the issues that? I mean, Melanie's in. You're here. I get it. But like, what what were you running on when you when you're running for alderman? My biggest problem is the unfunded pension liability. Got it. So, Paul, let me ask you, uh, just backing up, if you're elected mayor, uh, we we mentioned the caucus, and one of the roles of mayor is to approve caucus committee appointments. How are you and what are you going to do to work with the caucus getting boards and commissions filled? I will probably accept 100% of them. When you say probably, why would you what, expand on that? I can't conceive of anybody that I would not accept as far as uh, there. There are probably two individuals out of 21,000 people in Lake Forest that I wouldn't touch w- w- with a 10-foot pole. Uh, I, I, I've, I've, uh, uh, Hopefully it's not you and I, Pete. <laughs> so basically the mayor i mean paul that's a thing that could happen is you get to be mayor it's you can ixnay just like you got ix, ixnayed you can ixnay these people going to the boards that don't agree with your issues on the trees or the pension liabilities I, obviously the the issue of the turf field the the pensions those are the 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 only uh, roadblocks that that I really have as far as uh, the one company that that I worked for they they had two hundred thousand employees. The uh, CEO got got up in front of everybody and said, "I I have to trust you. I basically ha- ha- have to trust the, the uh, city staff. The only issues that I have with the city staff is the trees that, that they cut down. the The issue as far as with the turf and the issue of the pensions." So, so that that's kind of uh, I'm gonna backwards. My question is because that what you just said, you have issues with that, and I guess moving forward, if you're elected as mayor, what is your plan? Because you have issues with those three items that city staff is basically moving forward with doing. Tell me, I'm a voter. Tell me how I'm gonna vote for you, and you're gonna go in there, and you have issues with city staff decisions. How are you going to rectify those personal issues with city staff? Well, ba- basically, as far as with with the council, as far as if if the council says, "Hey, uh, we're we're 
we're happy w with the way we cut down trees. I I guess it's going to be a, a, a long two two years for me. Paul, that's what I'm trying to get. You just said you're going to have a, a long two years or whatever your term is. Um, if the council decides, you know, moving forward against your issues, which I'm trying to tell you pretty much has already been determined. So how, as mayor, if you're going to have these issues, how, why would I vote for you for just telling me that it's going to be a long two years if the council doesn't improve it with you? If you're comfortable that the unfunded pension liabilities went from 44 million up to 52 million, if you're comfortable with that, then I'm not your candidate. Paul, I got a question that's out, out of the blue. What do you think they should increase the time limit for people going up to the podium during the city council meetings? I have no problem with listening to people. And when they have a prepared statement, I could I, I could listen to ten to ten minutes of a prepared statement. The problem that I have is there's so many attorneys in uh, uh, Lake Forest. They 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 take it as though they're doing litigation and they want to stand up in front of the council for 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 forty minutes and talk about the issue. So the issue of the three minutes, yeah, basically. If you can't summarize the issue within three minutes, you probably haven't see see in reality, it should be what what's the problem, what's the solution, and what's the cost? So so a lot of times people will get up and they'll say there's a problem and you go, okay, we know it, it's sort of like like the flooding in Lake Forest. If you look as far as the city criteria is one hour of rain per hour. So, so if we have two hours or two inches of rain in, in an hour, you can have added area flooding. He, see, see, he, here's here's one of the issues. O over over by South Park, th there's a subdivision, and there was one one lot that that was not built. The city engineer came and he said there's 65 acres that drain on that one piece of land. The landowner said, I want to build. I found an engineer that said, it's okay to build here. So I know exactly what's going to occur. They're building the house there. And in three, four years, the fact that 65 acres of land all drain on that one lot I'm pretty sure that homeowner is going to come to the city council sometime in five, 10 years and say it's flooding. And I want the city to, to run. It's sort of like you were talking about that Lake Bluff Viaduct. As far as always flooding a couple of weeks ago. If you look at the study, there are three 52 inch pipes that all meet right around where, where those tennis courts are. And there's 152 going to the lake. So, so what the problem you basically have is over the years, when you have development, you have people that, that incur costs. And, and it just so happens that at the end of 50 years, you now have three 52 inch pipes going feeding into 152. So so the real issue is who who do you assess for the next person who wants to tap into one of those 52 inch pipes and you go the, we we really need a, a larger one and that's what the uh, uh, Brad Schneider basically got for, for the city of Lake Bluff. Uh, Brad Schneider got 10 million dollars so they're going to be able to put another 52 inch pipe from that location all the way to the lake. Some of these issues, they're hidden costs that only crop up after 30, 40 years. Let's say you don't, you have a lot of knowledge, a lot of background, a lot of good insight and all that. If if you weren't elected mayor, are you willing to serve on boards and commissions? Because I think you'd be of a great yeah. value to some of these boards and commissions. I was born in Lake Forest. I have a cemetery plot in Lake Forest. I'm planning on spending my whole life here. There's nothing 
I would ever do to hurt Lake Forest. It's always been good to me. And and if if Pandaleon said, "Hey, I, I need help," my my specialty is electrical engineering. If he has electrical engineering question, or if he has a finance, because basically for the past fifteen years, I get up every morning and I trade my account. I compete against Goldman Sachs every day. And I figure if I can beat Goldman Sachs, I should be able to help the city. So as far as helping helping the boards out, I've got no problem help, helping the boards out. I, 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 I'm here to help. I think I can add something to it. I think sometimes people get on, as they say, have an agenda. There, there, there are certain things as far as agenda that can be problematic. And obviously, my agenda as far as playing on natural turf would basically be one of the reasons as far as. But I hate the phrase, go along to get along. I never, see, see, I never joined a, fr a fraternity at Purdue because they one person, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, I'm they, an IU guy. I'm an IU guy, so I'm going to bash Purdue all the time. I thought they just had sororities. <laughs> well, and astronauts. So, so, so somebody would do something you stupid. <laughs> somebody would do something stupid at the fraternity, <laughs> and, and then you, and then you're, you're like, oh, you're from that that uh, fraternity. So, so the see, I'm a, I'm a pretty independent thinker. And I think that the concept of go along to get along, I, 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 I would much rather have a city council voting three to five because that show, there, there's, there's a Jewish thing where, where, where if somebody's put to death, you need one person to be on the other side. So, so, so if the group is 24, you need one person to say, no, don't put that per person to death because it shows that people have looked at both sides of the issue. One more question, Paul, and I really appreciate you coming on and, you know, answering the questions. And I, 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 I see the passion. It's not easy you know? sitting in that. It's not easy sitting in that sofa. No, I mean, I'm surprised he's not laying down. It sounds more like a, <laughs> a therapy session. But I know I appreciate I, I see your passion um, and I appreciate you running and running the right way. And, you know, if you don't get it, I really think you should consider um, boards and commissions because they need that. They need your passion and all that. But one last question regarding uh, the mayor position. If you win, you're walking into some pretty controversial issues that are going on. Not I mean. Not necessarily the turf, but there's there's a lawsuit going on, and vice versa. Now it's a, a new lawsuit against the city and all that. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Do you know Jamie Diamond? Not personally, but he does take a lot of money from me once in a while. He charges too much. I I uh, basically filed a federal lawsuit against him. So, so, so as far as taking on people, when, when I was in the courtroom, he, he had 20 attorneys on the other side. It, it was all with that MF Global. I, I don't know if you know of M, MF Global. Uh, John, so as a shareholder? Or? John Corzine, he was the CEO of, of MF Global, and he took... 1.5 billion from 28,000 customers, and I was one of the customers. And he wired transferred it to Jamie Diamond, and Jamie Diamond sent a letter saying, "Is this stolen money? Have you ever done a wire transfer and also ask for a letter saying that the money transferred wasn't stolen?" So, so as far as taking on people, well, I'm I'm asking about. Are you familiar with the lawsuit that has been going on with this whole block the box? Yes. Okay, that's what I was getting at. So 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 uh, um, I am aware of it. The fact that it's uh, a litigation, 
and that there's a 5% probability that, that I might win as mayor and I can't really disclose any information on an ongoing uh, litigation. 5%. All right, Paul. Come on. Give you. yourself more credit. I'll give you seven. Come on. Well, I, I mean, I mean, I, I look at it this way. Who, who's your issues. biggest contender? The, the, the breakdown. I believe that uh, Randy will get 50. Pru will get 30 and I'll get 20. I'd have to take you over Prue. I mean, she she subverted the whole process in itself. You didn't. He's got guts. He's here. I know. You're even coming in. She won't even come in. <laughs> That's transparency for you. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Hold on. It says it right here. <laughs> but but Mr. Walker. Yes, sir. I I believe anyone who gets involved with the high school, my hat goes out to you. It's hard work. It takes up a lot of time, takes up a lot of family time. And you are why the city is great because of volunteers like you. Well, thank you. And Mr. Walker's pretty good. <laughs> and, 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 and so, so my hat goes out to you. I try only to get involved with things that are a challenge. And, and I appreciate that. As I said, I mean, your passion for this community is evident and I appreciate that. And I, I hope moving forward, whatever happens, you continue that passion and then channel that passion even to the caucus. And the caucus has to start looking at people like yourself who are showing passion of our community. And, you know, that's where, it really lies in these volunteers and for all the boards and commissions uh, having that passion. So I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you coming on. Paul, well, thank you for coming on the show today. Well, th thank you because uh, you probably saved me an extra thousand homes that, that I have to go to. So thank you very much. Well, appreciate when you come by my house, I'll give you a beer. <laughs> thank we, you. We got some bagels for you too. Paul Hammond, thank you for coming on the Lake Forest Podcast. Great show. Thank you very much Thanks, for uh, having me. The Lake Forest Podcast is supported by viewers, listeners, and businesses just like you. Make a memory of a lifetime with Shark Eye Outdoors out of Longboat Key, Florida. Experience their shark beach fishing, kayak tours, and fossil hunting. Go to SharkGuyOutdoors.com to schedule an outing now. Forest Bluff Real Estate Group serves Illinois, Wisconsin, Lake Forest, and Lake Bluff. John Josephitis, Laura Lee Van Fleet, and Michelle Parnell get a free market analysis now at ForestBluffRealEstate.com. For the best cannabis in the world, look no further than Iliad Epic Grow. Their cannabis cultivation center owned by Lake Bluff's own Rich Ruzich. They focus on hard-to-find small batch products that will delight both the occasional user and Ganjie. When visiting Michigan, ask for it by name, Epic Products, Exceptional Process, Iliad Epic Grow. For more information, email info at iliadgrow.com. Havy Communications has been helping first responders arrive safely since 1983. It's owned by Lake Forest owned Mike Havy. Check them out at havycommunications.com. We'd also like to say that we're thankful for our patron supporters. Reverend Luke Back from the Church of the Holy Spirit. Matt A., Elizabeth C., Costa, Lance, Otto, RDM, John C., Dan Rogers, and Mike Adelman. Shout out to the Lake Forest Breakfast Group, Broad Stop in Kenosha, Captain Mike's Kenosha, Greentown Tavern, Waukegan, and the Frolic Lounge in Waukegan.